The amount of information that the human brain can hold is virtually endless, but bizarrely, there are still extraordinary things that have miraculously escaped the common knowledge. From your brain acting like a conductor to a surprising animal that can change their own eye color, here are 15 things you didn't know five minutes ago. Number 15. This is what actually happens when you put cut up onions in your socks while you sleep. Uncontrollable tears and a strong smell. This is probably the most recurrent combo that comes to our minds when we first think about onions. But little did we know, they have much more to offer than that. They contain 89% of water and they provide us with high quantities of antioxidants. They are also rich in vitamin C, E, and B6, which is important for normal brain development and for keeping the nervous system and immune system healthy. Okay, pretty sure you've already heard different stories about the benefits of eating onions, how they cure the flu or a cold, or even help fighting cancer. But even without eating them, test tube studies showed us that an onion extract is a powerful way to fight against different dangerous bacteria. That said, this is what actually happens when you put cut up onions in your socks while you sleep. The bottom of our feet are equipped with around 7,000 nerve endings, and basically each one of them will benefit from the onion's natural skills. The onion slices will kill the growth of potential germs and bacteria. They will purify the air from the toxins around, and so they will help with the smelly feet issue, amongst others. So watch out. You might want to use an organic onion to try this one, as they'll be free of pesticides and chemicals. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Arctic Reindeer Can Change Their Eye Color British neuroscientist Glenn Jeffrey didn't believe at first that reindeers would adapt to such environmental conditions through a physical change. But right after receiving a package from his Norwegian colleagues containing reindeer's eyes, he started to see things differently. One of the two reindeer he had to study then was killed by Sami herders during summer, the other one during winter. While opening the eyes up, he couldn't believe it. In winter, reindeer eyes are deep blue, and in summer, they're golden. Years of research later, Jeffrey and his colleagues realized that during winter's perpetual darkness, the reindeer increases the pressure inside the eyeballs, which reduces the spacing of the collagen fibers of the tapetum lucidum layer. This spacing is exactly what makes the light reflected during winter turn blue. By reflecting far less light out of the eye, it helps reindeer see better during long periods of total darkness. In summer, the spacing turns the eyes to to golden, as the reflective layers under much less pressure, it now reflects most of the light through the retina to help the reindeer deal with the 24-hour sunlight season. This happens when the reindeer is kept next to city lights in the winter. It simply makes the squeezing and the spacing partial, which also makes the yellow to blue transformation also partial. Number 13. Santa Claus was issued a pilot's license from the U.S. government in 1927. They also gave him airway maps and promised to keep the runway lights on. Santa Claus is probably one of the busiest people on this planet. I'm not even talking about Christmas itself. All the preparation and logistics needed for the holiday season is already a colossal workload. We all know it, and especially Santa and his assistants know it as well. But according to the official website of the Library of Congress, it might have not been that clear to some U.S. officials back in 1927. On this picture published on their official website, we see Santa Claus receiving an airplane pilot its license from the Assistant Secretary of Commerce. Wait a second, Santa needs a license now? And for airplanes? What happened to his reindeer sleigh? Well, if you believe the official caption, they state that due to the lack of snow, the air route might help Santa with his deliveries. But since when has Santa's sleigh stopped when there's no snow? The same caption also mentions an airway map allegedly given by the U.S. officials to Santa. Like if Santa didn't already know his way around the airways or didn't have any friends 
friends in the airline business. As we know, Santa Claus has no second to spare, and let alone for paperwork or a marketing stunt. So did Santa know about the melting icebergs a hundred years ago? Was he warning the US government about it, or did the US government want something from Santa? Number 12. High heels were originally designed for men. Have you ever worn high heels in your life? Yes? No? If your answer was, of course not, high heels are made for women only, then you're probably not aware that this women slash high heels exclusivity is pretty recent. The original purposes and uses behind the design of high heels weren't that different from nowadays. It's reported that the first high heels were spotted around the 10th century. They were made with the purpose to help soldiers secure their feet in stirrups. But it's only around the 15th century that Persian diplomats spread the high heels trend to Europe and the rest of the world. World. Impressed at first sight, the European male aristocrats saw the diplomats looking tall and their imposing self-confidence while walking and riding the horse. High heels then started to become a thing all over Europe's aristocracy. For both men and women, different models and sizes started to appear, and wearing high heels started to become a sign of prosperity and wealth. To the point that in the 17th century, King Louis XIV introduced to the French court the famous red heels and red soles design. Only his circle of nobles was allowed to wear it. The color coding and idea were quickly copied by royalty across Europe after that. Number 11. LiDAR is one of the iPhone and iPad's coolest tricks, and it's only getting better. LiDAR stands for Light Detecting and Ranging. You're right, it sounds like radar, but actually it's even more powerful in some ways. Radars work with the same principles, except that they send and receive radio waves. To put it in the simplest words, LiDAR is like a virtual 3D scanner for your iPhone and iPad. Okay, technically it's a bit more complicated than that. Basically, a LiDAR sends rapid pulses of infrared waves that bounce out of objects and back. The calculation of the time it takes for the wave's round trip gives us the distance to that object, its size, and shape. LiDAR is such a jump forward when it comes to high tech that it's now used in self-driving cars, drones, and all sorts of robotics. Do you remember those cool trick videos where you end up confused, not knowing if it was actually a real pizza or a bottle of water or simply a drawing? Well, now with LiDAR, your iPhone has the potential to get you just as excited and confused by what you see on the screen. Just go ahead and have fun with your 3D mapping scanner and let us know what you liked the most, the 3D video, photo, or panoramic scanning. Number 10. CAPTCHA for BOTS We all met in our lifetime at least one or two CAPTCHAs that we don't ever want to see again. You know, that annoying verification that's supposed to make our virtual lives easier and more secure. Whether you're sending a form or sometimes just visiting a website, we are still facing this verification step every day. Throughout the years, we've seen different versions and kinds of CAPTCHAs online. It started with a word or two that we had to write back and confirm it when asked. But as we advanced in technology, our bots and programs advanced with us too. On one hand, the bots originally created to solve these CAPTCHAs kept learning how to solve them so it became easier and easier to them. But at the same time, on the other hand, we kept developing the CAPTCHAs and we tried the distorted text version, the audio and photo version even. Solving CAPTCHAs and getting paid for it even became a thing called CAPTCHA farming, where bot operators pay human workers as low as 50 cents per 1,000 CAPTCHAs solved. Which makes me wonder if these CAPTCHAs were created to separate the bots from the men, or the men from the bots. Number 9. The Truth About Wasabi Wasabi or not wasabi? That is the question. This might come as a shock to a lot of you, and especially the sushi lovers, but most of the wasabi served in sushi restaurants all around the world is actually fake wasabi. The real spicy green condiment is rare to come across and pretty expensive and delicate to grow. Real wasabi farms were originally only in Japan, but nowadays we can find them also in the UK and in North America to provide for both the European market and the rest of the world. Wasabi plants don't have a large root system when using the aquaponic method, 
This is due to the plant being able to access nutrients when needed. It's not really that difficult to spot the differences between the real thing and the fake wasabi. First, let's check what they are made of. The real one is made by grating the wasabi rhizome. Simple as that. Meanwhile, the fake wasabi is usually a combination of horseradish, mustard, and green food coloring. So clearly and obviously, it doesn't taste nor feel the same. So if you're not sure which one you tried or if you ever tried the real one, keep in mind that real wasabi's not really supposed to make you sneeze when you eat it. It is spicy, but not that kind of spicy that makes you forget about the other flavors in your mouth, like with the fake one. Number 8. Dental floss is a good habit. According to the American Dental Association, only 16% of their surveyed patients actually floss. 16% is a very low ratio when you see how the ADA and other dentists in general recommend us highly to floss on a daily basis. Places like in between the teeth or just under the gum lines are very hard to reach with most toothbrushes. Inflammation in those areas is caused by the long-term exposure to bacteria we put our teeth and gums through. You should floss your teeth once a day. Start by pulling out some dental floss from the container. For some people, flossing is just too difficult. For others, it makes their gums bleed or sore. But what they don't realize is that bleeding and soreness means bacteria is causing an infection between your teeth. Flossing helps to fight and remove that. But like with anything else, the hardest part is to start and then to keep it a habit. Creating automatisms can help with incorporating new actions that demand a new daily routine and discipline. For that, it's very important to find the best product that suits your needs, gums, and teeth. Try to put yourself in the best conditions possible to floss every day, so you won't find yourself depending on mirrors or having to go back home every time you want to floss, for example. And remember that doing it correctly is as important as doing it often, so don't hesitate to consult with your dental professional. Number 7. Honey is non-perishable food. Canned tuna, dried fruits, and other canned foods are most likely on the top of almost every stocking up list that has ever been made. Possible emergency situations are the reason why our brains sometimes start thinking about the longest lasting food on the planet. Whether it's fresh, canned, dried, or processed, we are still aware that food has a natural expiration date. We learned how to check the freshness of what we're eating regardless of if there's an explicit expiration date on the package. We even realized that sometimes that humanly printed expiration date is more informative than it is accurate. But some very rare food items are totally non-perishable, apparently. For some people, honey is the only food that truly lasts forever. The particularity of this nectar is that, thanks to the bee's unique work and the enzymes from their stomachs, honey becomes a liquid that is both highly acidic and low in moisture, a lethal combination for bacterial growth. The storing and sealing of honey is also important to its long-lasting shelf life. Despite being low in moisture, honey's sugars can take in moisture from the air. So when the heated honey is sealed properly, moisture cannot be absorbed and the honey stays the same forever. Now listen to this. The oldest jar of honey ever found is believed to be 5,500 years old. Number 6. Why do flamingos stand on one leg? The majestic flamingos are very well known by their bright and beautiful feathers. These creatures are very peculiar, not only in the way that they look, but also when it comes to their behavior. Among the planet's most beautiful birds, they actually get their pink coloring from their diet, naturally rich in algae, larvae, and shrimps. After decades of observation, ornithologists still can't explain all their strange behaviors. For example, despite their long necks, they eat with their heads upside down, and when they sleep, they keep their heads on their backs. But so far, the strangest and most curious behavior is that they very often rest on one leg and one leg only. They do this regardless of if they're in the water or not. The first theory that was discarded after observations is that this technique allows flamingos to reduce muscle fatigue and perhaps to also move quickly in case of sudden danger from a predator. But what so far seems to be behind this behavior is the bird's needs to control its body temperatures. After observing a flock of these creatures, researchers realized that standing on one leg usually happens when the temperatures are getting cooler. Whether it's while sleeping or resting, the bird actually stands on one leg to get more warmth, whether in or outside of the water. Number 5. 
Brains are nearly 20% smaller than they used to be. But does this matter? Does size matter? It seems like this question's on a perpetual loop for all sorts of existential concerns we have as a species. According to different studies, the actual human brain is around 17.4% smaller than 20,000 years ago. Does smaller mean better, or does bigger mean smarter? Well, when it comes to the human brain, researchers already proved that this way of thinking might not be the best to fully understand brains. It's much more important to understand the complexity of the neuronal organization and the brain's growing process than its actual size. Scientists still don't know exactly why it shrunk or what would be the consequences of this resizing, if there are any consequences, of course. According to Michael A. Hoffman, professor of neurobiology at the Netherlands Institute for Neuroscience, this could be easily related to the fact that our bodies also have a lower average size than 10,000 years ago. And simply put, smaller bodies usually require smaller nervous systems to make it all work. So obviously, Obviously, the brain size would need to change proportionally to that, which in no case is a synonym of a deficient or less smart brain. Remember floppy disks? They were much bigger than any pen drive nowadays, right? Number 4. Eriovixia gryffindori, new spider that looks like sorting hat doppelgangers, are a fascinating phenomenon. So imagine finding doubles, but outside of your own species. This is exactly what happened to a team of arachnologists during one of their recent discoveries. They discovered a new, weirdly shaped spider species. Brown and with a pointy bent peak, they look and kind of move like the sorting hat from Harry Potter. It's true that the striking resemblance between the spider and the hat make the association and connection almost instantaneous, but imagine being a scientist and a fan of Harry Potter at the same time. It's almost as if you were making the laws of attraction bring you such a connection from both worlds. So obviously, everything was calling for a name to this new species that would clearly reflect the physical resemblance between the hat and the spider, but also to pay a tribute to the fantasy novels throughout a new scientific scientific discovery. So meet Areovixia gryffindori from the Areovixia genus. Its 20 species are widely distributed in Asia and Africa. It has a hairy body and a Harry Potter vibe. Number 3. A bear without fur? Surprisingly, a bear with no fur is completely unrecognizable. If they already look quite intimidating when normal, with no fur, they actually look more terrifying for some reason. But in reality, a bear that loses its fur is never a good sign. It's usually the result of either a disease or, sadly, also emotional stress. But in some cases, it remains a mystery. Take Dolores, for example. Her and other female bears living at the Leipzig Zoo in Germany all experience hair loss at the same time. Scientists believe that the bears affected by this bizarre affliction in this case was surprisingly a genetic defect. Could it be alopecia? They just can't figure out why some bears display a healthy, lush fur and some others simply don't. It's a mystery. Some of them actually live in the wilderness without fur. But for whatever reason this happens, the truth is they're quite peculiar to gaze at. They kind of look like an entirely different species that was hiding away all this time and we just stumbled upon it by coincidence. Number 2. Chewing gum boosts mental proficiency. Have you ever wondered why it is that people like chewing gum so much? Imagine if an anthropologist from another galaxy came down to Earth and saw millions of people chewing gum all day long. What would they think? The motion of chewing without the process of eating seems like such a waste of time in terms of biology, and for some reason, humans have been chewing gum for thousands of years. Even the ancient Greeks had gum. I mean, the father of philosophy, Socrates, probably had his own chewing gum stash. What's so special about it? Well, it turns Turns out that chewing gum is a lot more effective at making someone awake and productive than caffeine. Countless tests have been made to disprove this, but they've all failed miserably. And the most intriguing part is that even after all kinds of scientists tried to figure out what the human fixation with gum was, we still don't understand why it's so effective. The motion of chewing just has a mental boost effect on human beings. So yeah, if you have a deadline or a big test to study for, forget coffee, just buy some gum. Uh, note, this doesn't apply if you do voiceover for a living. Maybe just stick with the coffee. Number 1. 
Your head can be a radio transmitter. I know it sounds absolutely crazy, how can a human head transmit radio waves? Well, there's a very easy experiment you can do, given that you own or have access to a car that has a remote key. All you have to do is stand far away from your car, not too far away of course, and then instead of pointing your remote key towards the car, what you should do is actually point the key to your head. 10 times out of 10, this will work. Why? Well, because your brain is acting like a radio transmitter, which means your brain brain is receiving the remote key radio waves and then expanding them outwards. And it works best if you're pointing the key to your chin. This is because the oral cavity and fluids in your skull work some kind of obscure magic on the remote signal and amplify it. So basically, your head is a DIY antenna that works like a conductor. Not a great one, but one that works just fine. As Silicon Valley radio engineer Tim Pizar said, using your head can extend the key's wireless range by a few car lengths. I don't know about you, but I am absolutely surprised by this fascinating list of curiosities. Which one was the one that really took you off your feet? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.